Zalel and Aholiab and every wise-hearted man in whom the Lord has put wisdom and understanding to know how to do all the work for the service of the sanctuary shall work according to all that the Lord has commanded. And Moses called Bezalel and Aholab and every able and wise-hearted man in whose mind the Lord had put wisdom and ability. God is the one who gives us that wisdom and ability. Everyone whose heart was stir stirred him up to come to do the work. So Lord, stir our hearts to come and do the work as unto you. Do what you have. Thank you that you are the one who puts wisdom and ability. Mm -hmm. And you put wise heart heartedness in us. And they received from Moses all the free will offerings which the Israelites had brought for doing the work of the sanctuary to prepare for service. And they continued to bring him free will offerings every morning. <clears throat> and all the wise and able men who were doing the work in the sanctuary came, every man from the work he was doing. And they said to Moses, the people bring much more than enough for doing the work which the Lord commanded to do. So Moses commanded and it was proclaimed in all the camp, in all the camp, let no man or woman do anything more for the sanctuary offering. So the people were restrained from bringing. So, so praise the Lord. For the stuff they had was sufficient to do all the work and more. So the stuff they had was sufficient to do all the work and more. I'm trying to fix this. Praise the Lord. And, and all the able and wise-hearted men among them who did the work for the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twined linen in blue, purple, and scarlet with cherubim skillfully worked on them. The length of each curtain was 28 cubics and its breadth, four cubics. All the curtains were one size. <clears throat> Bezalel coupled five curtains, one to another, and the other five curtains he coupled one to another. And he made loops of blue on the outer edge of the last curtain in the first set. This he did also on the inner edge of the first curtain in the second set. 50 loops he made in one curtain and 50 loops in the edge of the curtain, which was the second set. The loops were opposite one another and he made 50 clasps of gold and coupled the curtains together with the clasps so that the tabernacle became one unit. And he made 11 curtains of goat's hair for a tent over the tabernacle. The length of one curtain was 30 cubics and four cubics was the, the breadth. The 11 curtains were of equal size and he coupled five curtains by themselves and the other six curtains by themselves. And he made 50 loops on the outmost edge of the curtain to be coupled and 50 loops he made on the inner edge of the second curtain to be coupled. He made 50 clasps of bronze to couple the tent together into one hole. He made a covering for the tent of ram skin, tanned red, and above it a covering of dolphin or porpoise skin. He made boards of acia wood for the upright framework of the tabernacle. The length of a board was 10 cubics and the breadth one cubic and a half. Each board had two tenons, projections, to fit into a mortise to form a clutch. He did this for all the boards of the tabernacle. And he made thus the boards for frames for the tabernacle, 20 boards for the south side. And he made under the 20 boards, 40 sockets or bases of silver, two sockets under one board for its two tenons and hands and two sockets under another board for its two ten tenons. For the other side of the tabernacle, the north side, he made 20 boards. And there are 40 sockets or bases of silver, two sockets under each board. And for the rear or west side of the tabernacle, he made six boards. And two boards he made for each corner of the tabernacle in the rear. They were separate below, but linked together at the top with one ring 
Thus he made both of them in both corners. There were eight boards with 16 sockets or bases of silver and under the end of each board, two sockets. He made bars of a sea of wood, five for the frame boards, five for the frame boards of the one side of the tabernacle, five bars for the boards of its other side and five boards for the rear or west side. And he made the middle bar pass through halfway up the boards from one end to the other. He overlaid the boards and the bars with gold and made their rings of gold as places for the bars. He made the veil, the veil of blue, purple, and scarlet and fine twined linen with cherubim skillfully worked. For he made four pillars of acia wood, overlaid them with gold, their hooks were of gold, and he cast for them four sockets or bases of silver. He made a screen for the tent door of the blue, purple, and scarlet, and fine twined linen embroidered. He made the five pillars of it with their hooks and overlaid their ornamental tops and joinings with gold. Their five sockets were of bronze. 37. Bez Bezalel made the ark of a sea wood, <clears throat> two cubics and a half was the length of it and a cubic and a half of the breadth of it and a cubic and a half of the height of it. He overlaid it with pure gold within and without and made a molding or crown of gold to go around the top of it. He cast four rings of gold for its four corners, two rings on either side. He made poles of a sea of wood and overlaid them with gold. He put the poles through the rings at the sides of the ark to carry it. Bezalel made the mercy seat of pure gold, two cubics and a half its length and one cubic and a half its breadth. He made two cherubim of beaten gold. On the two ends of the mercy seat, he made them. One cherub at one end and one at the other end. Of one piece with the mercy seat, he made the cherubim to its two ends, at its two ends. And the cherubim spread out its wings on high, covering the mercy seat with their wings, with their faces to each other, looking down to the mercy seat. Bezalel made the showbread table of a sea of wood. It was two cubics long and a cubic wide and a cubic high and a cubic and a cubic. He overlaid it with pure gold and made a molding of gold around its top. He made a border around it just under the top, a hand breadth width and a molding of gold around the border. He cast for it four rings of gold and fastened the rings on the four corners that were at its four legs. Close to the border were the rings, the places for the poles to pass through to carry the showbread table. Bezalel <clears throat> made the poles of a sea of wood to carry the showbread table and overlaid them with gold. He made the pure gold the vessels which were to be put on the table its plates and dishes for bread, its bowls and flagons for pouring liquid sacrifices. He made the lampstand of pure gold, its base and shaft were made of hammered work. Its cup, its knobs, its flowers were on one piece with it. There were six branches going out of the sides of the lampstand, three branches out of one side of it and three branches out of the other side. Three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch each with a knob and a flower and three cups made like almond blossoms in the branch, each with a knob and a flower, and so for the six branches going out of the lampstand. On the shaft of the lampstand were four cups made like almond blossoms with knobs and flowers, and a knob under each pair of branches of one piece with the lampstand for the six branches going out of it. Three knobs, or their knobs and their branches were of one piece with it, all of it hammered, work of pure gold, and he made of pure gold its still seven lamps, its snuffers and its ashtrays. Of a talent of pure gold, he made the lampstand and all its utensils. And Bezalel made the incense altars of a sea of wood. Its top was a cubic square and it was two cubics high. The horns were one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold, its top, its sides round about, and its horns. Also, he made a rim around its gold. And he made two rings of gold for it under its rim. 
on its two opposite sides as places for the poles to carry it. And he made the poles of Asiya wood and overlaid them with gold. He also made the holy anointing oil of the Holy Spirit, a symbol of the Holy Spirit is the holy oil, and the pure fragrant incense after the perfumer's art. 38, last one. Be Bezalel made, which was the priest, made the burnt offering altar of a sea wood. Its top was five cubits square and it was three cubits high. He made its horns on the four corners of it. The horns were of one piece with it and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the utensils and vessels of the altar, the pots, shovels, basins, forks, flesh hooks and fire pans and all its utensils and vessels he made of bronze. He made for the altar a bronze grate of network under its ledge extending halfway down it. He cast four rings for the four corners of the bronze grating to be places for the poles with which to carry it. And he made the poles of a sea of wood and overlaid them with bronze. And he put the poles through the rings on the altar side with which to carry it. He made it hollow with planks. He made the laver and its base of bronze from the mirrors of the woman who ministered at the door of the tent of meeting. And he made the court for the south side. The hangings of the court were of fine twined linen, a hundred cubics. Their pillars and their bronze sockets or bases were 20. The hooks of the pillars and their joinings were silver. And for the north side, the hangings were 100 cubics. Their pillars and their sockets or bases of bronze were 20. The hooks of the pillars and their joinings were of silver. But for the west side were hangings of 50 cubics. Their pillars, their sockets, bases were 10. The hooks of the pillars and their joinings were of silver and of the front and east side 50 cubics. The hangings for one side of the gate were 15 cubics, their pillars three and three and their sockets or bases three. Also for the other side of the court gate, left and right were hangings of 15 cubics, their pillars three and their sockets or bases three. All the hangings around the court were of fine twined linen. The sockets for the pillars were of bronze, the hooks of the pillars and their joinings of silver, the overlaying of their tops of silver and all the pillars of the court were joined with silver. The hanging or screen for the gate of the court was embroidered in blue, purple and scarlet and fine linen. The length was 20 cubics and the height for the breadth was five cubics corresponding to the hangings of the court. Their pillars were four and their sockets of bronze four. Their hooks were of silver. The overlaying of their tops and their joinings were of silver. All the pegs for the tabernacle and around the court were of bronze. This is the sum of the things for the tabernacle of the testimony as counted at the command of Moses for the work of the Levites under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron, the high priest. Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Ur of the tribe of Judah made all that the Lord commanded Moses. With him was Aholiab, son of, um, of Ishamash of the tribe of Dan, our engraver, a skillful craftsman and an embroiderer in blue, purple, and scarlet, and in fine linen. He was a skillful craftsman from the all the gold that was used for the work and all the buildings and furnishings of the sanctuary, the gold from the offering was 29 talents, 730 shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary. And the silver from those numbered of the congregation was 100 talents and 1,775 shekels by a sanctuary standard. A becca for each man that is half a shekel by the sanctuary shekel. For everyone who was counted from 20 years old and upward for 603,000 men, the hundred talents of silver were casting the sockets or bases of the sanctuary and of the veil, a hundred sockets for the hundred talents, a talent for a socket. Of the 1,775 shekels, he made hooks for the pillars and overlaid their tops and made joinings for them. 
the bronze of the offering was 70 talents and 2,400 shekels. With it, Bezel, Bezalel made the sockets for the door of the tent meeting and the bronze altar and the bronze gate, grate for it and all the utensils of the altar. The, soccer, the socket of the court round about and of the court gate and all the pegs of the tabernacle and around the court. So Bezalel was the son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. He did all the Lord, he made all that the Lord commanded Moses. So he was the son of Uri. So praise you, Father. Okay, and then 38 was it. So we thank you, Father, for the reading of the word. We thank you that we can read it. And we ask you, Lord, for understanding, that you'll give us revelation, understanding, wisdom, discernment, knowledge. Thank you that your word is alive. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces into the dividing sunder of soul and spirit. It's a discerner of the intents of, and of the heart. Thank you, Lord, that your word heals us. It brings us alive in you, Lord. It brings us up to where your thoughts are. We want your thinking. We want to take on the mind of Christ, which is in your word. We don't want to think our own way, but we want your thoughts. We thank you, Father, that you give us wisdom when we read your word. We thank you that you give us health, provision, protection. Everything we need, Lord, is in your word. And even this, the way things were made, the way things were done, the way Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made all that the Lord commanded Moses, his obedience, the way that you brought in skillful workers, the way that you anointed them, the way that he did it exactly, the color, with the gold, with the silver. Lord, there was a lot of gold because it was your glory. It is your glory. Now we have your glory in our heart and in your presence. <clears throat> but before it was in the things that they made, the obedience, the, the sacrifice, the, the per perfectionists perfectionism, the way that you had them do things. Lord, we thank you for, for Bezalel doing the way that you would have, the way you told Moses to do it, and he did it. And we thank you for the skilled workers, and we thank you for the way that you give us your word, and your word is precise, it's perfect, it's right, and it's true. And every word from your word is for us. So, Lord, we just thank you for giving us that wisdom that we need, that understanding that we need, that discernment, that knowledge, the discretion. We thank you, Lord, that it's even in the Old Testament with some of these things that we sometimes may think it's Monday, and we thank you that your word is alive in every way. So, Lord, show us the things that you have for us, and we thank you. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, I'm reminded about the lampstand that I read in chapter 37, how, because um, we did 36, 37, 38, that a lady had a, a dream and we were together and there was a lamp, lampstands, there was bowls, there was fire, whipped cream, and we were floating. And all of it, and all of it just was so, not magical at all because that's not God, but so glorious and spiritual. And I always knew I have the letter that she wrote to me that we had, she had the dream. And it's a friend of mine, my, <clears throat> mine and my parents up in New York State. But when she wrote it, it blessed me. And I still have it. So I am so thankful for it because it is something that God was giving her. But a lot of it is right in this little stuff. So a lot of times when we look into the things that are mundane, 